Once again, good morning everyone and welcome to Future Vista. The world around us is changing at a rapid rate and we are entering an era where any passion can transform itself into a lucrative job or business. A gamer can now earn by using his talent in the gaming industry. A sports lover can build a career in the sports industry. A travel enthusiast can work in various positions in the tourism industry. Entrepreneurship across various sectors is growing widely. Engineering isn't the only route for maths or science lovers. They can also choose the alternate and much more in-demand route of data science or cyber security. Never before has there been so much variety in career options and this is the time to grab the opportunity, follow your passion and build your career in the field you are ambitious about. For the second year in a row, Ali is organizing Future Vista, the New Age Carriers, a conclave that will witness the presence of dignitaries from various sectors. The panels will discuss the changes and growth in the respective sectors along with the emerging New Age career opportunities. This will help the young minds choose the right career path for themselves and also industries to build new enthusiastic entrepreneurs and a passionate workplace paving the way for pioneering innovations and futuristic ideas. Rapid change is taking place in the environment around us. Any interest can now turn into a successful career or business as we approach a new era. Finding a method to incorporate market trends into the business model might be challenging occasionally because they are constantly changing. Even before the pandemic hit, business had to adapt at an increasingly rapid rate. A market cap is an opportunity to produce and provide something that is not yet available. The young entrepreneurs of India are taking up the challenge to identify a realistic market cap and coming up with innovative ideas to fill it. Moreover, for a startup for the expansion of an existing one, gaps in the market could be great sources of inspiration for the next big innovation. The presentation titled Young Entrepreneurs Bridging the gap between innovation and market is specially organized and dedicated to those young minds who want to take their first step as an entrepreneur and design their own destiny. We are positive that our esteemed panel consisting of entrepreneurs and intrapreneurs would help students to find their passion and attain success through precise facts, guidance, and suggestions. Uh, the topic is basically innovation and market and of course bridging the gap between innovation and market and I can see the panelists here who I believe uh, are passionate towards their profession and they have made business out of their passion if I'm not wrong. Of course uh, there is innovation involved into it and I would uh, like or rather I would say uh, we would love to hear from all of them. There's always an innovation but then innovation without having an idea over customers because end of the day if I'm into an entrepreneurship or into a business we need to think of customers. We, sh we shouldn't be with an idea which is fascinating me, but rather an idea which is consumable by the consumers because end of the day, business means money, entrepreneurship means money. Probably in this uh, panel discussion, uh, you will come to know about how these passionate people who have made business out of their passions, how they have understood the market, have understood the need and probably bridged the market need uh, from their ideas with their ideas and you know innovated I don't know whether they have innovated the process they have innovated the product they have innovated the the lifestyle they have innovated the behavior what innovation they have done probably they will be the best people to speak on so without wasting much time I would like to uh, request uh, uh, Mamta ma'am to start with so that we can understand the relevance and the justification of the topic for these students. What is actually motivation? Now, when he has said that, I request all of you to look at yourself. Do you have two hands? Just feel it. Do you have a heart? Do you have two legs? 
And do you have all your faculties of ears, nose, eyes, etc.? Yes, a big yes. Then if somebody else can do it at your age or maybe at, an, at a tender age than yours, then what is it that stops you? Ask that question to yourself. What is it that stops you? Ask yourself. And the only answer that you get is why owe you? You yourself is becoming a hindrance to your growth. To you becoming what you are capable of. If there is one thing that stops is you yourself. And you may write that and etch it in your mind and heart that the moment you are able to overcome that roadblock, believe me, the way forward is actually smooth. Have you ever seen a building getting built? You have, right? When you travel, when you come, come to this place. And, and I think, you know, the cities and the towns and having the concept of smart cities, we are always work in progress, right? That is what development is all about. That development is always work in progress. Do you resonate with this thought? So if you resonate with this thought, then who are you? If a country develops year after year, moment after moment, if you go to Dubai, we all have known for the fact that aap do baad bhi Dubai jaye, you will ever, never feel that it is the same. Something or the other gets built, something or the other gets changed and it goes for better to better. So it means that if you really have to develop, you always have to be work in progress. So you can never say to yourself and pat your back and say, hey, that's enough. I have achieved what I wanted to achieve. If Twirl says that, then I'm sure Sujata ma'am will say, no, I'm done. I've achieved what I wanted. Now let me take a sigh of relief and get back to the couch and maybe a potato couch and just sit tight. There's nothing that I need to do more. Never it happens that way. In fact, when you start tasting success or else, if you start to know that this is the taste and smell of success, then more and more you get lured. And success, I, and I think with your generation, I can really say this very well, success is never, never measured in monetary terms. Agar aisa hi hota, to hamare desh mein chhodiye, koi bhi desh mein kabhi koi NGO nahi hota. Aur NGO hoke bhi, wo kabhi enjoy nahi karta. Kabhi mom teacher ya kabhi aapke teachers nahi hote. Teachers are the ones who are not looking for money. They get a spark and they get motivation when they see you doing well. Your success becomes their success. So I'm sure in the society that we live in, be it India or abroad, we've all, human beings are same everywhere. Why do we always think abroad is better and India is like this or that? Mera Bharat Mahan. Go anywhere and you will actually see and find out for yourself that the opportunities India actually gives it to you. No other country probably gives that to you. The session was on funding winter and we've talking about it, the kind of layoffs that are happening in the startup space, uh, the way the startup scenario is working out. Um, the reason why I'm uh, comparing startup with innovation is because when we're looking at new ideas coming in, when we're looking at new business ideas, new technology, etc. being implemented, we're looking at per se the startup space at large. Uh, now what happens is we have to understand the realistic scenario, particularly because you guys are students and you might have an entrepreneurial uh, mindset moving forward. So you need to understand the realities of life. So the first thing is that an investor is going to be investing in 10 startups with an assumption that nine of them are going to fail and one of them is going to be a blockbuster which is going to take care of entire losses and it is going to be covering up and rather giving him extraordinary profits despite the nine of them failing. But when you are thinking from your, your perspective as an entrepreneur, as a startup founder, you have to understand that you do not have those 10 chances. You're working, putting your heart and soul, money, everything into that one idea, into that one startup. When you're looking at serious ideas, wherein people are really working towards it, so whether it is legitimate, whether it's going to have that acceptability in the market or not becomes very important. Another aspect that becomes very important in terms of realistic is I've worked with a few professors at IIT uh, uh, wherein they have very good understanding in terms of technology, they've patented some uh, tech, etc. But when it comes to business, it becomes a challenge. So since we are talking about, you know, in today's session, the bridging of the gap between the innovation and the business and the marketplace, you have to understand whether people are going to pay or not. Because in startup space also, I don't know if you recall, uh, the US uh, Shark Tank, the first episode and the first story, the first business idea was about, you know, having an implant of a Bluetooth device into uh, your uh, uh, head through a surgical implant or something. 
and even you know after these many years almost a decade maybe it seems very very unrealistic and today in fact we're getting more skeptical about technology rather than uh, of course we are accepting technology you cannot do without ai no matter how many people sign that you know we should uh, keep uh, a pause on the ai and all but that is not going to work because competitors are there people are going to use if you don't use uh, citing ethical grounds that i'm not going to use ai right now the competitors will so you have to there is no choice about it so when we're looking at those kind of situations you have to understand whether there is acceptability or not so when you're Pitching for a startup, a lot of people talk about, you know, if I have 1% or 1% of the Indian market, I will be able to do this and I'll be able to make this kind of sales. But what you don't understand is out of 140 crore population, which we are now the largest populated country in the world. Um, so out of 140 crore, how many are paying taxes? Barely 5 crore, not even 5 crore people. So what are you going to take a 1% or 1% of 140 crore population or a 5 crore population? Of course, there's black money, etc. involved, so there could be 10 crore people who might be actually having a purchasing power. But when you're looking at even 10 crore people, and even then, a good chunk of them are non-taxpayers or they are at the lowest rung of taxpaying uh, population. So how do you look at innovation, bringing it to the market? Is the market ready? What is the amount of payment? What is, because India is one of the most price-sensitive markets you'll find in the world. It is the most price-sensitive. You know, one of the problems we now have is uh, we live in a global, you know, world where we get to know about what's happening everywhere. While that is wonderful, it also also encourages us or, you know, tempts us to just copy something that's being done somewhere else and try it here. And the risk of doing this is we often lose sight of the real problems around us, the real people around us. And that, I think, is the key thing we need to keep in mind when we talk about innovation and its success. That uh, who are we really doing it for? Is it for them? Do they need it? And uh, that brings to me to the starting of my story. So I'm actually an engineer by degree with further degrees in management like you guys. And I used to work in a global IT company called Hewlett Packard. And I, was, I loved my job. I, I still speak very highly of it. And you know, I am not one of those sob stories that I could not stand my job or my boss or anything. And that is why I had to become an entrepreneur. Neither am I one of those people who always dream that one and I'm going to have something of my own. I, uh, you know, it wasn't like that. But what happened was I stumbled upon a problem, a problem, and I felt the need to solve it. And I think at the end of the day, uh, an entrepreneur, or if I may say so, an engineer also is a problem, uh, is a person who wants to solve a problem. So it was to solve a particular problem that I decided that I have to become an entrepreneur. And what was this problem? It's actually a very weird problem, and I'm sure none of you have lost any sleep over it, but I have. I, I've li literally stayed awake at night because I had to solve this problem. At one point in my life, I thought my wardrobe was too full of things. And no matter how much I tried, I could not, you know, make it seem less full. And it always seemed that most of the things that I was never going to use again. Either it didn't fit me or I wouldn't wear that color or anything. And I wanted to put those things to a better use um, and not waste it. So I started going around asking my friends and family, you know, I have this problem, what can I do? The funny thing was, though this is such a, you know, silly or basic problem, everyone I asked told me, you know what, we have the same problem, but there's no solution to it. Hey, you just put it here, there, under the bed, over this, over that, but there's no, you know, long-standing solution to it. As I said, people did not have a solution. That led me to think, if this problem is so common in urban cities today because of the lifestyle we are now in. Uh, in our childhood, we used to shop twice a year, once for Durga Pujo and once for Nabobosho. Now we shop every weekend. So it's the lifestyles we live in, which is going to lead to this excess and in turn this wastage. So if this is a reality, then why can't there be a solution, a permanent solution for this? Now, talking about innovation and the market, uh, 20 years back, when I started my career into this, um, it is full of innovation. Everything we were doing or asked to do was something new. Nobody has done it earlier. 
I studied economics and with a specialization in econometrics. I'm sure few of you would know about that subject. But those are all theoretical uh, studies and maybe with some applications. We barely have written a program to uh, run a regression model of a scale. Now we are given this job to okay, build a logistic regression model, if you saw, some of you have heard of it, uh, with 2 million data sets. I have never seen a 2 million data sets. Nobody has. So those are the kind of environment when we grew up. Now uh, about innovation. So what couple of good things happened to me is that uh, I worked in an American company for the first four or five years. Uh, then I moved to Indian IT companies. And one of the companies I am very fond of working is of Wipro. And I was uh, part of the Wipro here in Kolkata. I eventually became the head of the COE of the Wipro before I started. Now, coming to the innovation. One day, uh, my super boss, uh, who sits in Bangalore, uh, told me that, Angshu, we have been doing a lot of work in the US market for all the top clients. Why don't we think about doing something for the emerging markets, emerging business? Now, I have been a trained economist. I studied develop, development economics in my master's, specialized on that. Uh, I always have been, you know, this emerging markets, emerging countries, developing countries, always has been a good passion to me. So I said, yes, I'll take this up. So that's the first time I got to do something which was never tested. I was told, okay, build a solution go to the market and sell it. And naturally, the most, uh, you know, ready to mar access market was the Indian market. So I go and sell the, uh, your solution in the Indian market. Okay, very good. Now I been learned all this thing in the US market. I thought, why don't we make something in the similar in the Indian industry? So uh, we built something in the line of marketing mix mo modeling. If some of the students here have been studying marketing, maybe you have heard of this term. But it's nothing but how you optimize your media spends across various channels. The first thing we went to the Indian market before, before developing the solution is that to understand the data. Of course, we all hear that the data is not available. At least I'm talking about say 2009 and 10, so 10, 12 years ago, uh, we met, because we are from Wipro, a lot of uh, marketing heads of top companies met us and we gave the idea, would you like to try this? He said, yes, we can try, but there is, the data is not there. While we studied, when we worked in the whole of this in US markets, data was not really a challenge. We used to have data for every sale that is occurring in any of the stores in US. At least, we used to get data from 40, 50,000 stores and millions of customers. So this is a challenge, number one challenge we figured, find out. Second is that even if the data is there, that is not structured. Second thing, okay, all these, okay, still these are, uh, we thought this is a solvable problem. So we built a solution using that. Now we started going to the market. What did we hear? As Ashwini told, India is the most price sensitive market. What he has told, I learned it by roaming in the streets of Delhi and Mumbai day after day, talking to the clients. While the solution is very good, great thing, we should try that. But the moment it comes to money, nobody was ready to spend money. At least that amount of money. And I'm talking about big uh, consumer brands. Then we realized that this model of the solution that we are bringing in, would not work. So how we can make it work? Uh, we started thinking. Incidentally, that was the period, and if you can remember this, uh, 2000, I mean, of course, you people are, most of you are very young, but people who were around uh, would know that this 2009, 10, et cetera, is the time when the cloud computing came to the market. And a very, very primitive, to comparing to today's cloud that AWS or Azure provides, those are maybe primitive services. That was there, number one. But number two, and more importantly, is that in the this AI ML analytics market, the most important part was the software. During that time, there was no software which is uh, cheaper. There was only primarily one software, SaaS, and which was prohibitively costly. I mean, a, a license would go into millions of dollars, crores of rupees. 
Nobody would use that. So I found out, thankfully, that this was the time when the open source analytic software started coming in. It was, the, the, there's a language called R, Kema. So then what we did, we converted that whole solution from SAS to R just to make it cheaper because R is a free open source tool. The third thing happened is that, you know, to process the data, we found that even if we are using R, the processing of the data is not so easy. So we again went towards another technology that was again coming up during that time and we, maybe all of us heard that is the big data technologies. So we are the very early adopters of big data technologies. We are the early adopters of cloud. We are the early adopters of open source analytics. Combining these three, we could create a solution where my cost of the software or the cost of the infrastructure became very, very less. I mean, came down to probably 2-3% of the original thought. <coughs> then we were able to make this affordable to the Indian markets. So this is what I feel is that the innovation fits the market. The market was somehow ready, market was open to experiment with the solution, price was prohibitive, we used technology to make that solution affordable to all and we could scale up that business.